In this tutorial, we'll learn how to use a shader toy shader inside Lens Studio. Now, before we jump into anything, I want to make sure you know about the Shader Toy to Lens Studio help page. Now, this page is published by Snap, and they have a ton of conversions for all the common Shader Toy operations. So Shader Toy will have inputs for frag chords. And so if you click on there, you can come down and see how you can get that information for uh, your code node. Now, all these fun things here are a little tedious to convert, but fortunately, uh, Hart, who goes by the handle 2020CV Inc. on Twitter, uh, created a converter for Shader Toy to Lens Studio. So he has a little demo video here. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at this tool and recreate this little glowing plasma ball and then move into some more complex examples. All right, so I'm here on shadertoy.com. And at the time of this tutorial, that plasma globe is on the homepage, but I'll also include a link in the description in case that's changed by the time you watch this. So I'm going to open up this shader and we can hit play and we can kind of see it working. Now this code here, uh, we're just gonna go ahead and copy all this but before you convert any shaders, check for the license. This particular shader is licensed under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial share like license. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not going to give legal advice, but before you use this shader in your project, read this license and make sure it's compatible with whatever you're building. Now, if you're building a lens for a client, this non-commercial clause might cause an issue. Um, and then there's also the share like, which um, means you might need to share your lens under the same license. Uh, so read over the license, make sure you know what uh, you're doing. So let's go ahead and copy this shader code. So just control A, control C, and then I'm going to head over to Hart's conversion tool. I'm going to paste that in and hit convert. And here is our code. So now I'm just going to control A, Copy all this and uh, we're ready to head over to Lens Studio. All right, so I'm here in Lens Studio and uh, for that plasma globe, let's just create a plane and stick our plasma globe on that. So I'm going to search for plane here in the objects panel. Let's add that. Let's go ahead and add a new material. We're going to do a graph empty. Once we have that, we're going to apply it to our plane. And then let's select our material and open the graph editor. Now the code nodes um, where we input is going to show up in here. So I'm just going to try to resize my window so that we can see that a little better. It is a little tedious to work with. Hopefully that'll be updated in future versions. Anyway, so let's um, right click or you can click up here to add. And we want to add the code node uh, or custom codes node. So let's select that. I'm going to expand this out with this node selected. I'm going to scroll down and select all that, paste in that code from Hart's conversion tool. And then very important, you have to click apply changes anytime you make a change. So apply my changes. Now we have some new input. We have this output. So I'm going to connect it. And we have our plasma globe. And it is working without us having to do anything with these other inputs. Uh, so um, if we want, we can change our material blend modes into something like screen. And now we have our plasma globe in our scene. Now, if we head back over to shader toy, to our plasma globe, uh, you might see down here, we have this I channel zero um, input that shows up in Lens Studio as a texture input. And in shader toy, they are using this noise image. Uh, so if you're going to do anything with shaders, I definitely recommend you have some base noise image to work with. Uh, so you can create that in Photoshop or something. Um, if you aren't very comfortable with Photoshop, I'm going to go over really quickly how you can create your own noise image using a free online tool. So I'm going to go to photop.com or photopia, photopia, whatever it is. Uh, this is um, basically Photoshop in your browser. Let's create a new project. And I don't think the size really matters too much. Uh, let's just make this 720 by 720. I'm gonna hit create. And then I'm gonna create a 
black background. So I'm going to right click on this gradient tool, choose paint bucket. I'm going to make sure I have uh, black selected. I'm going to fill that in, come up to filter, noise, add noise. I'll just drag this up to about somewhere around 100%, doesn't need to be exact. Hit OK. Now we can zoom in, we can see it's just a bunch of random pixelated noise. And I'm going to file export as, and let's do a PNG. Uh, a JPEG is going to try to compress it. We might lose the noise info. So just do a PNG to keep all the data intact. Okay, once you have that noise image downloaded, go ahead and import it into your resources panel. And then let's connect it to this custom code node. So I'm going to right click add nodes. I'm going to search for texture. Uh, I don't want the texture 2D parameter. I want the texture 2D object parameter. And that will keep this orange 2D texture. So I'll hook that up. Now, if I select my material, uh, we should get the inspector panel to update. Sometimes it's slow. And on this custom map, I'm going to choose noise. And now uh, let's turn off this blend modes. Now you can see we're kind of getting this uh, energy field around the outside. Uh, it's a little faint, but it is sampling from our texture. All right, so that's a pretty straightforward shader to convert. Uh, now let's do this galaxy shader. So you can see this one is a CC0. So, so this is public domain. You can use it however you want. Uh, so let's go ahead and copy all this code, head over to the converter, paste it in and convert. This converter is a true lifesaver and Hart is doing the Lord's work in providing that to us. All right, so let's rename this other material plasma. And I'm actually going to duplicate it just so it already has the code node. Let's rename this to galaxy. I'm going to select my plane, change out the material. Now, whenever you're doing changes, make sure you have the right material selected up here. I'll switch to galaxy, select that code node, paste in my code and hit apply changes. Now you can see that we have some different errors. Uh, so they have to do with the fact that um, the shader is using the hyperbolic tangent, which whichever version of the um, shading language that Lens Studio is using does not have that function. Uh, so tangent is just the sine over cosine. So this is a pretty easy function for us to write ourselves. So we'll have a float. We'll call it my hyperbolic tangent. I we'll have an uh, input float. We'll return the hyperbolic sine of x by, by the hyperbolic cosine of x. Let's just indent that, close out the brackets. We'll apply our changes. Um, we should still get an error because we haven't uh, replaced in the instance of the hyperbolic tangent. Uh, so there's no find or replace in here. So I'm just going to copy this into a code editor and we'll do the find and replace there. All right, so I'm here in my code editor. I'm just going to paste this in. And then I'm going to search for hyperbolic tangent. And so here's our first one here. We can skip that one. I'm going to replace all function calls to mine. So let's replace that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. And now we should be good. So I'm just going to copy this and let's head back to Lens Studio. Let's replace that, apply our changes, and let's see if our shader can compile this time. All right, and silly me, um, you may or may not have caught, I actually copied the original shader code uh, to paste in my code editor instead of my converted one uh, from Hart's tool. So we put that in, we actually get our output here. Uh, so let's reconnect this to our shader output. Ah, and we see that also the hyperbolic sign requires that later version. So my shortcuts of just doing the hyperbolic center over cosine is not going to work. So we actually need to look up what the formula for this is. All right, so I'm on Wolfram Math World, hyperbolic tangent. 
So we can see it's the hyperbolic sine over hyperbolic cosine, uh, which simplifies down to this formula here. Uh, so let's just recreate this inside of our code. Uh, so that is e to the 2z minus 1 all over e to the 2z plus 1. Yes. Okay. So e to the something, I believe, is just uh, exponent. So let's uh, uh, float y. So we'll do some parentheses. So we'll do exponent of 2. Uh, we'll put a decimal point times x. And I think the plus 1 was on top. Now minus 1 on top. Uh, plus one on the bottom. I am not a mathematician. We'll divide by the exponent of two decimal times x. Now this two decimal, let's make sure it's a float and not an integer. And then let's return y. And let's just uh, replace this function inside Lone Studio. And let's see if it works or if I am just making another rambling tutorial where I don't know what I'm doing. All right, there we go. We got some wrong operands. Oh, I mentioned those float things and integers and we did it here as well. So we want one dot. Let's apply those changes. Uh, there are no errors here, no errors in the logger, and we have our galaxy. Uh, so let's make that plane a little bigger, just so we can see it better. And there we go. So this is a galaxy created entirely via shader. If you want to change anything, you'll have to go into the code to try to understand what's going on to make your tweaks. Uh, but here we go. We have our galaxy and we can change the screen mode to something like screen to get rid of that black background and it's now kind of overlaid here. Uh, so pretty cool. Uh, Hearts tool is definitely awesome. But as we saw, it can't handle everything. Uh, so be prepared to kind of jump into some codes to make things work. All right. Now you might come across a shader that is a little more complex and has multiple buffers. So here we have buffer A. It takes as input um, this image here a noise texture, and then itself again. Um, so once we head back into Lone Studio, I'll show you how we can set this up. Then buffer B takes as input buffer A. Buffer C takes as input buffer B. And then our final image takes as input buffer A, buffer C, uh, an extra image texture, and then a noise texture. So before I copy this code and start converting, I'm going to set up my own studio project to kind of streamline the whole process. All right, so I'm back in Lone studio. I have a blank project. I have my noise texture imported uh, that we created earlier, and I'm going to start setting up my multiple buffers. Uh, so we had buffer A, B, and C, and then our final image buffer. So our image, our final output will just be this original render target. But for the other but for the other buffers, uh, we want their own render targets as well. So I'm going to rename this to buffer A. Then I'm going to hit Control D two times to duplicate that. And let's just name it buffer B and buffer C. All right, so we can leave those. Now let's go ahead and create a new screen image. So let's rename this camera to buffer A cam. And now we want to create a new layer for it. We're going to do this for each of the buffers. So I want to take it off the orthographic layer, put on just layer one. I'll just call this A. And its render target will be buffer A. And then I'll select this image. You can change the stretch mode to stretch. We'll put that on layer A as well. And so there's our buffer A cam. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that for buffer B, uh, buffer C. Our final image, we'll go through and rename things. And then I also want to duplicate it one more time for what's going to be a feedback for, if we come back here, because we have buffer A feeding into itself. Now, it doesn't work in the studio to just feed that buffer A render target back into the material. We have to have kind of this uh, second render target. So speaking of which, 
create one more render target. We'll call this feedback A. All right, so let's start renaming these so we know what's going on. So we have our buffer B cam. Spelling is not important. Maybe it is. Let's add a new layer. We'll call this layer B. Let's just go ahead and create our new layers while we're here anyway. Layer C. And then we want our feedback A. Okay. So buffer B cam, we want the outputs to buffer B. And then this screen image, we want to put on layer B. Now this is all very repetitive, but I'm going to make you sit through it because there are lots of places that could go wrong. So I want to get you used to going through all these steps. Now this one, we can call this our uh, final cam. Let's put on the orthographic layer. A render target will be render target. And let's grab our image and put it on our orthographic layer. All right. So we have these three buffers. We have our feedback. We have our final image. Now let's head into our scene config. Now we have buffer A, buffer B, buffer C, uh, feedback A. Then our final render target. This is good. We want to make sure that buffer A comes before B, before C, before the render target. And then feedback A, I don't think it matters too much where it goes. Um, so let's go ahead and start creating our uh, code nodes. So let's add a new empty material. We're going to call this uh, buffer A mat for material. Let's select our buffer A camera. Let's put this material on that camera. And now we're going to go to our scene config and change our live target to buffer A. So we can see what's going on and let's grab our material and head into the graph editor. All right, let's give ourselves a little space. Let's add a code node, custom code, and let's head back to shader toy. Let's copy buffer a let's note the license. And let's convert this first one. And then like the galaxy where I fumbled around, these convert a lot more straightforward. So let's paste all this in and apply our changes. And we have something here. Uh, nothing interesting going on yet because we need some inputs here. So let's just double check. Uh, so here in Shader Toy, we have our base image coming into the first channel or noise, check, noise texture into the second channel. And then buffer A is going to come back into that channel too. So let's go ahead and we can close this a little bit and add our texture object parameters. The texture to the object parameter. Um, so we need three total. So I'm going to control C, control V, copy paste. And we want to rename these. So this is going to be our base image. We know that was channel zero. And I want to expose the size outputs and the texture size goes into resolution. Now the second channel was the noise. And that goes into channel one. And we have this I channel resolution one. So we also want to expose this size output texture size. And then this one here will be the feedback a and let's connect that to this uh, I channel two. All right, so you can see we have some sort of preview here. Um, this checkerboard texture is just a placeholder, so let's uh, populate these. So our base image will be the device camera texture. Noise will be our noise texture. And then we'll select feedback A. Now feedback A is just kind of like a blank placeholder image. So on this feedback A cam, for the screen image, just select that. And for the texture, choose buffer A. So that will feed back into itself. So I'm going to expand this out. And you can see we have this a CRT monitor effect, just like Shader Toy. Uh, now, if you want to change kind of how bulgy it is, you'll have to go into the code. Um, 
the shader toy is often designed kind of more horizontal. Screens in mind, Snapchat's vertical, so sometimes we'll need to change things. Uh, so I'll leave that up to you to change the code uh, because these are your lenses you're making and I'm not a shader expert. All right, so we have our buffer A finished. Let's go on to buffer B. So I'm going to select this material. I'm just going to duplicate it. Let's rename to buffer B material. And the scene config, let's switch to buffer B so we can see what's going on. And then we'll reselect our material. We'll head to shader toy. Let's select buffer B. Our input is going to be our buffer A. So let's select this code, go to hearts converter, paste that in, convert. Let's select all, copy, go back to Lens Studio. And we'll make sure we switch the material here. Don't accidentally paste it into buffer A. Select buffer B, select that code node. We'll paste it all in, hit apply changes. Now you can see we just have the one input. So buffer B material, we want buffer A to be our input there. So let's give Lin Studio a second to just catch up to what's going on. Oh, actually let's select our buffer B image and put the material on there. I said this is actually going to show up somewhere. There we go. Uh, so this buffer B, you can see it resembles buffer A. And if we come back to shader toy, you can see it is a horizontal blur of buffer A. So that looks about right. Uh, so let's get buffer C. Go ahead and copy this code while we're here. Come to the converter, paste it in, convert it. And we'll see here buffer B is the input for this one. So I'm going to copy my buffer B material with the control D. Let's rename to buffer C material. Uh, we will switch our material here to buffer C, select the code node, select all, copy. No, I'd not copy. Don't listen to me. Copy this again, select all, paste, apply changes. And our buffer C material, our base image was going to be buffer B. And then our scene config, let's switch to buffer C. And our buffer C camera, select the screen image, put your buffer C material. And you can see we have, um, this time it's a vertical blur. If we look at the shader toy notes on the shader. And now let's head to our final image and get this finished up. So I'm going to copy this. So we have buffer A coming in, buffer C, this extra material that would be kind of like a reflection, and then our noise texture. So let's copy this, paste you in, I'll copy you. For a live target, let's switch to render target. We'll copy this material with control D, which rename to final. Let's choose our correct material here. Select the code node, paste that in, apply changes. Select our final cam screen image. Select that correct material. And now we have nothing here, so let's set our inputs. So let's kind of shrink this down so we can see what's going on. So we have four input images. We have our, instead of our base image, this is going to be buffer A. This one was, we do need our noise, so I'll just move that down. This one is going to be buffer C. I'm going to copy that and paste it. And this is going to be our reflection. So let's start hooking these up. So buffer C, our reflection, our noise texture. And then our texture size here for the noise. And we'll select our uh, material. And you might see we don't have anything showing up here. So if we come back to our custom code, 
uh, we have this channel to sample no matching overloaded function found. Uh, so error 57, this means line 57. So let's take a look. So we have this I channel to sample and inside here we have this reflect function. Um, as I said, I'm no shader code expert, but this reflect function, um, I don't think is implemented in the studio. So for now, just for this tutorial, I'm going to just delete that and replace it with UV, which is UV mapping, which if you look up here at this I channel zero sample, it's also sampling the UV. So I'm just going to do that for now. If you're making this effect for yourself, you could do something more proper to get that looking different. Uh, so apply those changes again. And now we have something showing up. So let's choose our inputs. So we want to buffer A, we want buffer C, we want our noise, or actually did I mess up the reflection and noise? I'll put noise down here. And then our reflection, I'm just gonna choose this echo park. This is the default environment lighting, specular. And you can see that kind of reflection. Now this doesn't look quite how I expect it. So I'm gonna come back to shader toy it looks like, is it channel two? Yeah, that does look uh, right. Uh, that's a little strong. So I'm actually just gonna turn this off uh, rather than try to tweak it. Let's keep this as a pretty bare bones uh, CRT effect. All right, so this is what we have. Um, if you wanna go through and get that reflection working, you can. Um, we can actual code is beyond the scope of this. This is just showing you how to get it from shader toy into Lin Studio. So one last note before we leave, make sure you check the frame rate of the shader on your device. Uh, some things will run fine in Lin Studio, but not great on your phone. 